Good morning, Blended Church. It's a day for me to celebrate because the Lord has risen, and it's a day that hopefully it'll be the last time that we have to teach from the stage or from the balcony in this context with an empty building. Next week, we will be meeting live in this building. This service right now will conclude with all the information how to make that happen. Pastor Mark will be on and will tell you about going on Eventbrite and getting tickets. The tickets are free. We're not charging to come to church, but we're just making sure there's room for you. We're making sure your family or your family units or your family friends that are hanging out together are able to worship together. We're also practicing social distancing so everyone is safe. There are some requirements that we're asking of you for the safety of everybody else. Um, there, so we're, please um, watch that. Download our app. You can find that. Pastor Mark's doing a bunch of videos, sharing throughout all the week, but all the detailed information will be here. Today's our last day at Tibbs Drive-In. I'm just going to say this. I'm going to preach just a bit this morning, but really, if you're watching, I would encourage you to come to Tibbs Drive-In this morning. Maybe get your clothes on right now. You can come to Tibbs Drive-In. It's on Tibbs Dri- um, Tibbs, South Tibbs Road, 11 o'clock, and you can bring a cooler full of Cokes, Gatorade, Waters, bring you some popcorn, you can bring some lawn chairs, you can practice your social distancing there, but come celebrate with us. We're going to preach a great message on one of the Old Testament prophets. You're going to hear a word from the Lord. We're actually in the 11:15 server, or I think it's going to just start at 11 o'clock. We're going to try to broadcast from Tibbs Live. Many of you have asked why we've not done that. We've not been able to do that well. We don't have the technology. We're not NBC or ABC that we can just take cameras everywhere and move them all over the place, but So the quality will be a little bit less, but we are going to broadcast that today. So I just want to, but I'm going to give you something here, and I'm going to give you something a little bit different than Tibbs, and bear with me doing that. It's been rough on our staff. I so appreciate our staff and all you volunteers that have made things happen at Tibbs Drive-In and the church staff. We've been preaching two different messages a week. We have worked our tails off. We have um, just just busted busted hard at every end, and we're tired, we're hurting, we know that you're hurting, we know many of you are hurting, and I just want to encourage you in your pain to, to just, just settle a little bit, open the word, begin to pray, and allow God to begin to speak. You can't let the pain drive you to a place where it makes you go crazy, or it makes you do something you don't, you shouldn't do. We see pain happen in people's lives, and they they go, they, sometimes they do things they regret later on, and it ends up doing more damage than it does good. I remember a painful moment in my life when my son and I were cutting down a tree, and my son stood up in this tree and said, I can cut this limb, and did, and when he did, the tree, a great big, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how much weight, 500, 1,000 pounds of this tree bounced in the ground and bounced back up and landed on my son's foot and trapped him in the tree, and I can remember him crying and saying, Dad, please help me. Help me. I can't feel my foot. I'm stuck. He was stuck in the tree, and because the pain was so real, because really I was responsible for that event, allowing my son to do that, and the pain was so real that I actually threw a ladder up, tried to climb up this tree, wasn't thinking straight, and then I fell 10 feet out of the tree, landed on my back. It knocked me out, so now my son's stuck in the tree, thinking he's going to lose his foot, thinking that he's going to die up in this tree. I'm knocked out. My wife's running around. I sort of laugh at it now. We were crazy. My wife's running around going crazy. The next thing I know, there's fire departments. The police are there. The jaws of life it takes to get him out of the tree. Pain does crazy things to us. The reason we're having this pain is because God's shaking everything that can be shaken. I said that at the very beginning. When we, this pandemic started, I said, God's shaking the earth. I didn't realize how bad the shaking was going to even affect me. I was thinking I was going to be fine for it. I didn't realize all the things that I would feel, that you would feel, the pain that it would bring. We see in the Old Testament shaking happen, and it it speaks about it in Hebrews 12. God says, I shook once Mount Mount Zion, Mount Sinai. I shook it, and it was a marking of the Old Testament. And God was saying, look, I'm in control. I have... I have authority over all things. Trust me. Listen to me. That, you know, that's where the Ten Commandments was given. And then the writer of Hebrews quotes what Moses says. Moses said, you know, this is when God shook and said, man, he controls it all. Then there was another shaking that took place in the marking of the New Testament. It's when Jesus died on the cross. 
And when he died, when he, when he gave up the ghost, when his head bowed, the earth grew dark. And then the Bible says there was an earthquake, an earthquake so violent even shook the graves of people. Actually, dead people rose and walked the streets when Jesus died. It was a marking of the New Testament. And Hebrews tells us there was a shaking. There have been shakings. But Hebrews 12 says this. It says, see, you do not refuse him who speaks. For it's impossible for us to, to escape the voice of God or when God shakes. He shakes everything around us. That's in verse 25. And then um, verse 26, it says this. Whose voice then shook the earth, but he's promised, saying, Yet once more I will not only shake the earth, but also the heaven. Now this, yet once more, verse 27 says, indicates the removal of these things that are being shaken as of the things which are made and that the things that which cannot be shaken will remain. Therefore, since we are receiving such a kingdom, remember what he says. He says there's going to be a shaking of everything that can be shaken because we're receiving a kingdom. We are marching into the last days, my friend. God is judging, I believe, the church. God is dealing with the world. God is going to speak, and the world is going to get more crazy and this culture of the world will try to pull you in. It is a time for Christians to move into this place of a sound mind in Christ and realize who we are, what we are, what we're called to do. We can't be so shaken by the pain and the struggles that we lose our identity or lose or our culture starts to supersede our Christianity because the fact is our Christianity should supersede our culture. I think that we allow that to be broken and that's why we see so many bad things taking place. We see the church has actually almost become powerless in this place. Yet God said he will build his church. So as we talk about the shaking, it's a shaking of false ideas. It's a shaking of corrupt government. It's a shaking of false worship. It's a shaking of money. We're seeing a shaking of security. We're seeing a shaking of our, of our future. And let me tell you something. The Bible is very clear over and over and over and over when he talks about the return of the Lord. It says it's going to be a great day, but it actually also says it will be a great terror. Actually, the Bible says that when God's kingdom rises in vindication, hear that. We can't take vengeance on an evil world. We have to love. Love is our avenue, but it says God will take vindication. God, God, vengeance is God's. And the Lord returns with great terror. The Lord returns with great terror. What we see taking place, and I wrote, I, I made a little comment in, on, on Facebook this morning, and I can't even hardly get on Facebook like some of you because of just the cesspool of people just shouting and screaming, and nobody's listening, and so many people are hurting and wounded. And, but it does say this in Romans who Paul writes, and Paul writes about the, to, the, to the church that's, that's in Rome and what a corrupt government. You know, America's just like Rome. Rome was the most powerful nation that there was. Nobody could have destroyed Rome, but it crumbled inside out. I'm, I'm fearful that's what's taking place of America, the crumbling from the inside out. There's not really an outside enemy that can destroy us, but we're destroying ourselves. I'm concerned because I don't see American biblical prophecy. What happens in our future? Where, how do our kids grow up? How do my grandchildren grow up? What's their future like? It's up to us as Christians to rise to the occasion. And, and I believe God has shaken all of us. I don't think we put that much importance on God, on his feelings, on his holiness, on his, on, on, on his church, on his things that are important. And we were more concerned about our money and our, our vacations and our status and our jobs and our 4013s and all the different things that we do on the possessions that we own and the titles that we have and on the status that we have on Twitter. And we, God just shaking that stuff and breaking it down. But as Paul wrote to Rome, and it's, I'm telling you, it's very similar as it is here in America right now. You can look at the progression that took place in Rome. And eventually in Rome, I met sexual craziness, government craziness, racism, murder, hatred begin to just wipe away the country. 
Romans 1.18, Paul writes this. He says, For the wrath of God is revealed against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Now, you know, you can't even hardly speak truth. You'll be called out. You'll be called whatever. I'm watching, I just watched um, a man who I greatly look up to, who I've watched help thousands of churches just be persecuted by the government because of a one tweet. Be, I mean, it's craziness that's going out. They want to suppress the truth with unrighteousness. Listen, because that, that because what may be known of God is manifest in, and God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes can clearly be understood by the things of his eternal power. And by the Godhead, so they are without excuse. Listen to this. Because although they knew God, that they, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but they became futile in their thoughts, and their foolishness, and their hearts were darkened. Here's what he's saying. They get growing worse and worse and worse. Professing to be wise, they became fools. That is what's taken place in our country. We think that we're wise and we're fools. We're looking as... China must be looking in as Iran must be looking in and say, look at the fools, look at them self-destruct, look at them break themselves down. It says, they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image of a corruptible man and the birds and the four-feeted animals and the creeping things. And therefore God also gave them up in their uncleanliness, in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves Boy, that's what we see. My fear is God may just turn us over to our own brokenness. God may just turn us over to our own craziness. Maybe because we kicked God out of schools. Maybe because we kicked God out of our government. Maybe because we kicked God out of our civil places. Maybe because we kicked God out of everything. I meant we can't even now have holidays where we say Merry Christmas. It's now, you have to say, to be politically correct, it's Happy Holidays we kick God out of Hollywood. We kick God out of everywhere. And maybe God just withdraws and turns us over to himself. I meant the lawlessness that abounds um, all over the world, the hate, the disgust, the, the agony that people are going through. And we don't even see half of it going on. Half of it is behind closed doors. We don't see the pain of the children. We don't see the breaking of the family. And I mean, as a, and, and, and in our culture, we break down the, the nuclear family. We, we say no longer do families important. And it's craziness that goes on. Here's what God said. He said, God gave them up. They exchanged the truth of God to dishonor their bodies among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped the creature rather than the creator. I mean, I heard the... Um, I'm just going to say it. I, I heard Governor Como in New York stand up and say, God didn't help us. We did it. I mean, that's blasphemy, my friend. That's blasphemy. He says, the creator is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to their vile passions. That's scary. I mean, I think there comes a point where God loves you. God is so concerned about you. God has done everything to redeem you. But if you just keep rebelling, eventually he'll just give you up to your vile passions. It says, for even their women exchange the natural use what is against nature. Likewise, the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, buried their lust one for another. Men committing what is shameful and receiving themselves in the penalty of the heir which was due. And even as they did not retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind. Is God giving us over to a debased mind? Will we be left to our own sinfulness? We think we can heal ourselves. We think we can fix ourselves. We think we can govern ourselves. We think we can handle our own things. I mean, it, it's craziness. And they do those things that be not fitting, being filled with unrighteousness and, and sexual immorality and wickedness and covetousness and, and, and malice full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers. They are backbiters. They are haters of God. They're violent. They're proud. They're boasters. They're inventors of evil things. They're disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Can you hear that? Does that not sound like our time? We live in a time where people look at the skin, the pigmentation, an 0.2% difference of a person, and we say we're better than them because 
we're lighter or we're darker. We hate one another. We, 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 hurt, we, we harm one another. We cheat one another. We, we, when we don't get our own way, we throw fits. We go crazy. We turn violent on other people. The whole world has become crazy. Verse 32 says this, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things end up deserving their own death. It's scary, America, and we've got to come together, church. I'm watching, honestly, can I just tell you the truth? If you look at social media, it almost seems like the blended church is falling together. The nations of people that we've come together are now fighting and arguing and hate. I thought we were about love. I thought we were about caring. I thought we were about about being Jesus to one another, and no matter, um, no matter the male, female, black, white, red, yellow, purple, young, old, we would love one another and care for one another, that we realize God created us all in his image and loves us all, and none of us are better than anybody else, but we're all made in the image of God, and God created the diversity and the beauty of it, and now we've started looking down at God's own creation I've got some questions I want to ask, and, and I don't even have, I'm, I'm not going to give you the answers to these, so I'm going to let you figure this out and let you think about that the government has so divided us, the media has so divided us, the political realm has so divided us, it's really the devil behind the media, it's the devil behind the, the corrupt government, it's the devil behind the corrupt politicians that, that are going on, the things that are taking a place. They've so divided us that we can't even think straight. Let me give you an example. Who says, the government tries to say this, the media tries to say this, they'll tell you on NBC, on um, MSNBC, on CNN, on Fox News, they'll tell you, you can't be pro-life and pro-justice. Well, who said that? Who told you that I had to pick one or the other, that I couldn't stand for both? As a matter of fact, you heard me preach a couple months ago. For a long time, I kept saying, we are not pro-life. We are not pro-justice. We're whole life. We believe for justice. We believe for for loving people from the womb to the tomb. We believe in both. Listen, if Christianity, we need to cry out for the poor. We need to cry out for the downtrodden. The book of James and James 1 talks about Christianity is the only thing that can make the poor man and bring him up. The, the rich man's not better. The poor man's not better. But in Christ, we're all one. There's no partiality God doesn't see a difference, and the Christians should rise up, and we need to be helping. We need to be providing justice in, in the streets, in the government. We need to be doing some social justice. We need to be crying out for the little babies who are being slaughtered thousands a day, and who's crying out? Indianapolis is now at a crime rate in our city of we, we are going, we are at a record pace of homicides in our city. We have People being gunned down in the streets. The other night, a, a woman had acid, throw, acid thrown on her and killed. And I mean, she has, what's happening in our cities? We've let the media divide us. Who said we can't be both as Christians? It's time we stand up and say, I am all about social justice. I am all about babies being killed. I am all about things being done right. I can be both, and I will be both. See, I shouldn't let anybody divide us. I shouldn't let a culture, I shouldn't let a news media divide me. I can be both. I'm not just pro-life. I'm whole life, baby. I'm the whole thing. I believe we ought to be going into the inner city. That's what we've been doing. We have a building that we're going to be doing some programs that are going to be amazing and touching. Can I tell you, the real issue in our cities are fatherless and a family we have, we have young children carrying guns because that's the only thing they know. They don't seem to have a hope. They have, I mean, it's, it's a mess. It is craziness going on. And the only way we're going to fix them is going in and help them. But we've got to help them. We've got to also help the, the little babies who are being slaughtered, who have no choice. These are lives. These are, these, God knew us before we were even in the womb. I mean, this, this is all about life, and we've allowed the devil to divide us. Let me, so we have this division of justice and, and, 
and, and this pro-life thing. Who says I can't? I'm, I'm watching some of you post on thing, well, if you cared about this, look, we ought to care about all of it. As Christians, we care about all of it. The second thing is, who said that if I'm for black lives, which I am for black lives, who said if I'm for black lives, I can't love the police? Who said if I love the police, I can't love black lives? Who said if I love black lives, I can't love the police? Both of that is insane. Both of that is anti-biblical. The media tells you that. The media will tell you you've got to pick and choose a side. But I'm telling you the media and our politics is a lie. That that whole government structure, that whole media bias is a lie. Let me tell you something. I believe in black lives. I believe in red lives. I believe in every life that's been born. I believe in the police. We have a lot of godly great men and women who come to church here who love Jesus, who are in the police form, force. Oh, there's some bad police. There's some bad preachers. That doesn't mean that the, there, there's bad people in every group. But the issue is here is we can't divide. Who said we have to divide and hate the other group? That's all about the devil. That's what the devil wants to do is divide us. Let's talk about this. We went and voted the other day, and I pray you voted. I encourage you to vote. It's a great liberty that we have. But do you know what the first thing they said when I went in? Well, when, when I went in the building, the first thing I have to have this mask and I have to wash my hands and then I get, and then they say, okay, are you Republican or Democrat? And I just looked at the lady trying not to be rude and I'm like, well, I'm neither. And she says, no, well, you can't vote. You have to pick a choose. You have to vote Republican or you have to vote Democrat. I mean, I'm like, I'm not Republican nor Democrat. I'm Christian. I have some different values here. The truth is, um, I'd probably, from a Christian perspective, I'm probably getting rid of everybody, of all the politicians, and starting fresh because none of them are offering hope. I mean, it's so corrupt. The government is so corrupt. Our political system is so corrupt. And it's a scary thing. I'm actually, you're going to hear me say this today, In the book of Amos, when Amos called out the people for their false worship, he said, you have worshiped a false politicians. And I'm scared that's what we have happened. All of a sudden, we have become so pro-Democrat, so pro-Republican, that we're worshiping this thing like it's going to fix us. But who said we have to be divided? We've allowed the world to divide us. I mean, we now hate one another who come to the same church who love the same Jesus, who know we ought to care, but you hate somebody because they say they're Republican or you hate somebody because they say they're Democrat. Like like either party is going to fix it. Hello, hello. Yeah, so who said we have to do one or the other? Who said I have to be a Republican or I have to be a Democrat? Or let me ask you this one. Who said that I have to be black or I have to be white? Let me tell you something. The truth of the matter is we're all related, friends. We came from Adam and Eve. We have the same grandpa and grandma. We all are people of color. There is none of us any better. We let this racist craziness, I'm white or black. Well, I want to tell you something. I I have skin in this game. I have a granddaughter who... I can't say to her, well, just identify with the black people. That's going to mess her up. Just identify with the white people. This is a, a, a multicultural girl. Listen, the, the browning of America is taking place, and our distinctions are going to be crumbled. But the devil's trying to divide us and keep us from being in unity. When will the church, we actually do what John 17 said, which I preached about a few weeks ago. When will we be one like our Father is one? When will we love one another and care for one another, give grace for one another? Um, some people have gotten mad at me, and I'm sorry if you've seen a post or I've said something to offend you. I know some of you are hurting, and I'm sorry you're hurting. I really am. I am so sorry you're hurting. The truth is, is everybody is hurting at this point, and I, the only answer that I have for all that is Jesus. That's the answer. only answer is that we repent and we come back to Jesus that we don't come back to religion, we don't come to back just to come to church, that we don't go to church for, a social, um, for social status, that we would actually come to church humbling ourselves, that I believe we need to bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and humble ourselves. I believe each of us at this time ought to reflect if there's any hate or anger in our heart. The Bible says we shouldn't let anger drive us. We shouldn't let the anger like turn into wrath. And so we need to look at yourself and maybe somebody's hurt you. That's why the Bible says go to them and fix it. Go to them and talk about it. Maybe somebody's harmed you. Go to them and talk about it. Maybe if you heard they're so, both, if both of you can talk, you can get past each of your side of the story and learn to love one another and care for one another. I'm sorry I've rambled on here, but I'm just telling you, we will, we will affect the city. We will affect this nation. This church will move on. We will preach Jesus Christ. We will preach the gospel, the good news, not only that Jesus died that he was buried, that he rose again, but he teaches us how to live an effective life here on this earth. This will be the foundation of what we stand for. So let me take 11 o'clock, Tibbs drive in. We're going to have a great service. I don't know if you've not been there. I understand some of you, and I'm okay if you don't come, but I just want you can come and be socially distanced. You can come, stay in your air conditioning, and hear it on the radio and, and be a part of a great service. You can be protected there. Tibbs today, 11 o'clock, we're going to have a blow-up service. I'm excited about it. And then I will see many of you live here in this service next Sunday at Father's Day. If you do not feel safe coming out, if you feel like you need to stay home, if you're vulnerable, I understand that. I'm okay with that. I'm so sorry this virus has affected you. We will still have online services. You'll still be able to watch our live service in here. We just want to give you room to work out your own salvation, as the Bible says. We give you room if you feel like you just need to stay in your living room. That's okay. We love you. And if we can help you, we want to help you. We love you, Blended Church. We're believing for you. We will be a church of every tribe, of every tongue, of every nation, of every race. And we will go forth under the banner of Jesus Christ.